Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Your Mark on the World show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe. I'm a Forbes contributor covering social entrepreneurship and impact investing, and we are excited to have back on the show today Nancy Mann, who is uh, the uh, Senior Vice President of Corporate Citizen Strategy, Global Philanthropy, Corporate Citizenship at Estee Lauder. She's also the Executive Director of the Mac Aids Fund. You do not want to miss this episode. Welcome to Your Mark on the World, bringing you another change maker with champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. Nancy, welcome back. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me back. I always well, enjoy speaking with you, Devin. We're thrilled. You know, the, the work that you do is so important and so impressive. The hundreds of millions of dollars you've raised to fight AIDS, the impact you're having, the way you do it. It's a fascinating story, and I'm just thrilled to get you back to get a, a bit of an, an update and a recap on 2017. Um, so tell us a little bit about uh, how things are going. I, I, I'm just, uh, the, the questions are popping in my mind like popcorn for you, but uh, start off by telling us how the year went. How much money did you raise in 2017 for the AIDS uh, Foundation? Uh, we raised 25 million this year. Uh, and I, it is, as you as you say, I think it's a super interesting and exciting time. I mean, one of the, the the many privileges of doing a job like this is we try and really marry how we can do good for business and also uh, do good for the world. And what's exciting in the model that we have at Mac is that it's a cause product driven effort. And so basically, the more products you sell, uh, the more money you're able to give away. And you know, I appreciate the thanks in terms of uh, the work that we're doing, but it really is driven by our makeup artists, our employees, and also by our customers. And what is exciting now, I think, is that it is really, it is the golden age of purpose. Uh, we are seeing uh, an acceleration of a trend that has been in motion for some time where consumers are voting with their dollars. And they are saying, yes, we care that you care we share your values and we want not only a sustainable business, a good financial model, but and great products and a great place to work and a great stock to invest in. But we want a sustainable business, right? You got you have yeah. to make the world a better place. And that's, I think in some ways the world is, you know, it's, these are challenging times in terms of a lot of um, sort of, I think, fractious fragmentation across the geopolitical landscape a lot of polarization. Um, and what we're seeing is the exact sort of the, uh, sort of, I would say the societal and environmental physics of that is that there's a backswing. And the backswing is we're really concerned about what the world is, what's happening in the world. We don't agree with it. And so we're gonna take the power that we do have um, as consumers, as employees, as investors, and we're gonna vote and you're gonna clearly see our vote. And that's what's so exciting to me yeah. And for us at the other companies, we are lucky to have this incredible house of brands, uh, including Mac and Aveda and Origins, Lilebo, and those brands in particular, we feel are situated, they are the ideal brands for this day and age. And so we work together and we also learn lessons from one another. And uh, it's a great time, super interesting, super humbling, super energizing. It is exciting. So this 25 million from 2017, what does that bring the historic tally of money raised for the Mac AIDS Fund uh, to so far? In total, we've raised $480 million, which is obviously a massive amount, as in many, many big issues that we're tackling across the healthcare field and across the social and environmental field. $480 million, while a lot of money, is not enough money. Um, so we are working with other donors to be as effective as we can. I think what is exciting now for those of us who've worked in the healthcare space is that we really um, are within, we can see how we can end AIDS. What has been difficult is we're now at a time in the world where I think the global healthcare standard is of less importance to some of the bigger countries. Um, and as a result, a lot of the government funding has been cut. And so while we now have the tools to end AIDS, we are um, backsliding on overall funding, right? So what we need to do is really double down and really completely understand as we see spikes in Ebola virus or even actually the flu virus, 
that viruses do not discriminate. Um, our global health standard is only as good as the sickest person among us, and that we need to double down and ensure that everyone, regardless of uh, economic background, uh, where they're born, their age, um, their employment status, has access to, or their minority status, in addition, has access to quality health care and prevention. And so we're really focusing uh, at the Mac AIDS Forum and partnering with the UN, partnering with um, global governments, private public partnerships, and also the folks who've been at it for a long period of time um, to, to end the epidemic. It, you know, one of the things that you've also, or one of the groups you've partnered with over the years is, uh, you know, superstars like Rihanna, uh, Miley Cyrus, Lady Gaga. Have you added anyone in the last year or two since you and I spoke last that's uh, to that roster of amazing people who supported the, the brand? Sure. Um, well, since then, we've been lucky enough to work with Taraji P. Henson, who, um, you know, was in the movie Hidden Figures, has been on Empire, very, very powerful spokeswoman who speaks very deeply about her own background, her, how important the, the, you know, sort of community health is to her. And we have just now announced and are working with the singer Sia. You know, at the end of the day, um, and, and coming out of a nonprofit background, it's very important to maintain relevance. And it's very, very important amidst, you know, the massive amount of information and causes that people are uh, exposed to every day is to basically use various levers to tell your story, to get attention, to maintain relevance, and to bring home the very human story. So one of the levers we've used historically, really for 25 years, has been celebrity, right? Particularly musicians, but also actors. And what we're trying to do is basically get into and combine essentially the celebrity and the power of celebrity with the power of purpose. And so um, we've seen also an acceleration of that trend. Now they're called influencers. But I think what we've also seen is not only from a sort of celebrity news positioning, the importance of celebrity, but also we see people who are um, very wealthy, honestly, often have time to donate and also see a world that they feel purpose needs to be more prominent. And so it's, a, it's an amazing mixture of leveraging celebrity and cause. And it's a different mix every, every year. Um, Sia has been very personally dedicated around mental health issues uh, and been very forthright about her, her own um, opportunities um, and uh, I think her own um, difficulties in that area. And what we find is the most effective uh, use of celebrity in the Viva Lam campaign are celebrities who are what we call the real deal, who are willing to talk in a very authentic way about the issues they've confronted and their families and friends have confronted and why that drives them to give back. So we're excited about this journey with Sia. Um, it also always matters, quite honestly, the quality of the product, which is why we're so happy, all of us, to work at MAC. The quality, the color of the, we do it, basically we raise uh, the money through a lipstick sale. We do it in 191 countries across the world. So, um, and it's, a, it's we're, we're, our primary audience in some ways are our makeup artists, because those are the ones who sell the product, but also our consumers. It, the, the good news is, is, this is, I feel, the golden age of purpose. The question for us, for people like me and for you, is how do we capitalize on it? How do we take the discussion, how do we take the work even deeper and stronger now that we have such an incredible listening in the world? Absolutely. Now, Nancy, uh, you've accomplished amazing things in your career, and I want to just tap into some of your expertise for the benefit of the social entrepreneurs who will watch this, but what's the most important lesson you've learned over your career? Well, I don't know if I can boil it down to one, so maybe I'll throw in a few. Um, I think one of the most important things is to stay humble and stay learning. You know, one of the things about being in the giving profession is you become very popular. Uh, for somebody like me, who's a little shy, uh, who enjoys my own sense of humor, you know, people are drawn to you, they like your jokes, they, you know, you get a lot of emails. Um, and one of the things I've done in my career is, is go in and out of giving money, honestly, because it does it sort of keeps you humble and keeps perspective. Um, and, um, you know, here, what I think is energizing is we do have this hybrid model of the for-profit and the not-for-profit. And I have found for me, 
that's a good recipe because you bring the discipline of consumers, basically. One of the things that's a little difficulty, difficult about grant making and about nonprofits is your consumers, who are your clients, don't pay the bill. Your funder does. And so I think that attenuated feedback loop makes that a little bit more of a challenging space. Um, but I do think that the purpose-driven work that I've been fortunate enough to do, say, at God's Love We Deliver, or when I worked with George Soros' foundation and Open Society Institute, has made me a better thinker in terms of purpose. But we have to basically, to mine, uh, you know, and to my second point about education, you know, for me now, the whole world of what are called ESG metrics, environmental, societal, and governance, are really uh, ripping at this incredible pace. And for someone like me who runs a division around environment and society, a major Fortune 500 company, I have to be able to eat ESG for breakfast <laughs> and really understand like where, what's the pace, what's the direction. So that's where I would say keep educated. Don't stick in one lane. Try and be function agnostic. Increase your skills. You know, all of us got degrees. You know, at the point, we're at a, at a pace and at a point, I think, in history where you need to work across functions. You need to work across budgets in a, in a function agnostic way. And um, just work with And um, you have to be kind of your authentic self because it's too exhausting to try and be somebody else. And it's otherwise you end up being sort of isolated in your own journey as opposed to really looking at questions from different perspective, which I think you get from people in different aspects of their career. Yeah, for sure. Well, Nancy, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to be with us today. Before you go, will you just remind people where they can learn more about the Mac AIDS Fund, where they can buy the uh, Viva Glam lipstick, and how they can connect with you? Sure. Personally? Well, what? Sure. Well, in terms of learning about the Mac AIDS Fund, that's macaidsfund.org. Uh, we have a lot of work there on the site about our grantees. So if you uh, want to buy a lipstick you, or learn more about the program, you certainly can go into a Mac store um, or a Mac counter in, in one of our uh, partners like Ulta or, or like um, Nordstrom, um, depending upon your com country or Selfridges. Um, in, in terms of um, the website, it also offers information about our grantees. And so if you would rather roll up your sleeves and volunteer in addition to buying the lipstick or instead of, please go ahead and do that. And you can also give directly to those, uh, to, those, to those groups. So I think the one thing that I really want to emphasize is uh, the time is now. There is an enormous amount of good work to do. And um, there's, a, there's an enormous amount of very important social, political issues that need our attention and need our help. So in whatever way, you know, your viewers can be inspired, I would just really encourage them to get out there. And if it involves the Mac AIDS Fund and Mac Cosmetics, we'd be, we'd be all the more happy. Um, but um, please make sure to get busy and to make a difference. Fantastic. And if, if you feel like we could be making a bigger difference, reach out to us. All right. Well, all right, thank you, Devin. Nancy, thank you so much for joining us today. We wish you every success in your effort uh, to eradicate you. AIDS from the world. It's always a pleasure. Be All right. Well. Let's do some good. Okay. Thank you for listening. This podcast was recorded via Google Hangouts on Air and is available at youtube.com forward slash Devinthorpe. Subscribe to this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes by searching for Your Mark on the World. Every weekday, Devon hosts a CEO, celebrity, entrepreneur, or other changemaker here on the Your Mark on the World show to inspire and prepare you to make your mark. Devon is a champion of social good, writing about, advocating for, and advising people who are doing good. He is a Forbes contributor who is a recognized thought leader in social entrepreneurship, impact investing, and crowdfunding. To book Devin as a speaker, visit devinthorpe.com. Learn more about Devin's work at yourmarkontheworld.com.